Hi, I'm going to try to make this a quick video. It's about thin film interference, and this is tailored for the IB HL physics syllabus. So, thin film interference. Essentially, it's the same as normal interference, except it occurs at a boundary. So, this is our boundary. Alright, this is air. And it has a n value of 1. This has an n value of 2. Okay. Remember, n is just refractive, refractive index. Okay, and that's equal to uh, the speed of light. Uh, divided by the velocity of a wave n1 in medium 1. Okay, so suppose a ray enters this boundary. At an angle of uh, theta i to the normal and it reflects at well an angle of theta i to the normal again all right law of reflection reflection now inside this medium which is more optically dense the ray is going to refract towards the normal going to refract towards the normal and then we're going to get more reflection we're going to get more reflection out of the boundary like this and our eye our eye which is here when it when it catches both of these rays of light the rays of light can either constructively interfere Or destructively interfere. So, what are the criteria for constructive interference with these rays of light or destructive interference with these rays of light? So, I've just redrawn the diagram to hopefully make it more clear. Now, all angles are small, so the angle of incidence here is small, the angle of reflection here is small, the angle of refraction here. Is also small, and uh, so is the so is the angle of uh, incidence here and reflection here. So all angles are sm very very small. Uh, that's because the light rays are hitting these boundaries from very very far away. So you can almost imagine. Well, we are going to assume that the light rays are traveling completely perpendicular uh, to this boundary. So we are just going to assume that. Okay. To simplify things. Now, this light ray here. Well, this is just a ray diagram. It gives us the um, gives us the direction in which the light ray is traveling. But really, if we were to graph the light ray, maybe as a transverse wave. So suppose this is the light ray. Okay. So it completes one wavelength here. Completes one wavelength in some time period. Now, because we said this was air, so it has a critical, uh, not critical, it has a refractive index of 1, and this is a more optically dense medium, so it has a maybe a higher refractive in index of, of 1.5, or something like that. What happens is, as a wave, as a wave approaches uh, what's called a fixed end, so if this is a fixed end here, it will undergo a 180 degree phase change. Okay, it will undergo a 180 degree phase change. So, so this ray over here, let me just change color. This ray over here, oops. this ray over here, all right, has a 180 degree or high radian or 
have the wavelength phase change. Okay, now if the ray that exits also undergoes a, a uh, half a wavelength phase change as it travels uh, through this boundary, through, through this medium, and then reflects, then it's going to constructively interfere with this uh, reflected ray. So let's see what the criteria for that is. So suppose the, the ray enters this medium, and it's, it's, we're going to assume it's completely vertical, so it travels a distance. Okay, it travels a distance of 2D. So this whole distance, I'll draw two arrows, is it's actually this whole distance of 2D. So it, it, it goes in and then out. So 2D. Okay. If 2D is some this kind of some non-integer uh, multiple of lambda, so m plus one half lambda. Then when it when it exits here, all right, that that's its phase change. It's gonna it's gonna change um, its phase by this much, okay. So it's gonna come out here like this, okay. It's gonna come out uh, like this, okay. And this this ray here, because it's hit a fixed end has also come out like that, and so they're going to superimpose and constructively interfere. So we'll get constructive interference if twice this distance, which is the distance the ray travels, and so it's the distance that the, uh, that the wave is offset by, if you will. What, what that means, basically, is uh, suppose, again, this is the graph of the wave, and this is the wave entering the boundary, right? It's entering the boundary like this. Now, if it has to travel half a wavelength, so if this entire distance it travels is half a wavelength, then, then when it comes out, right, it's going to be, it's going to be here, okay, it's going to be here, so this is, this is the, the, the place where the wave is going to come out, so that's, that's here, and when it comes out, it's going to be like this, it's going to have undergone a 180 degree phase change and like I said earlier it's going to superimpose with this reflected ray which has also undergone a 180 degree phase change and it's going to constructively interfere form a wave of a, of a, of a larger amplitude. So that's for that's for uh, constructive interference but you may have noticed that I've cheated a bit and uh, the way I've cheated is I've assumed that uh, the speed of the wave remains the same in this more optically uh, dense medium uh, in relative to air. So its speed, I've assumed, is the same. That's obviously not true. And we know that from the definition of, of refractive index, okay, we know that, that n for a medium, so this is medium 2, okay, n for a medium, is simply the speed of light, okay, simply the speed of light divided by the velocity divided by the velocity in in the medium okay now we also know that v is equal to f lambda for any wave that's true okay <clears throat> now the velocity in the second medium all right, is f lambda 2. So the wave in the second medium has a wavelength of lambda 2 and the decreased wave speed of v2. That's because its critical angle uh, is, is 1.5, okay, which means that its speed has actually decreased. If you, if, because uh, in medium 1, in air, n1 is simply 1, so its speed is simply c over c. Its speed is c, so n1 is just 1. Okay, in this case, its speed is v2, and uh, v2 is less than c, so n2 is greater than 1, it's actually 1.5. Okay, so how do we work out uh, the criteria for 
for constructive interference given that we know that uh, the wave speed is in fact not remain the same it's actually decreased well, it's it's not that difficult uh, what we notice is as soon as the wave enters this medium uh, we know its frequency will remain the same but we know its wavelength is now some new wavelength uh, lambda 2 so what it's going to do is it's still going to go on its way all right, but it's going to move in steps of lambda two uh, rather than rather than steps of of lambda one, and so we do the same thing, but we do we 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 tailor this for lambda two instead of lambda one. Uh, so so let's see how that uh, how that works. So again, I've just redrawn everything uh, to, to make it more clear, and uh, we see that the wave in the second medium. It's a different wave speed. Uh, we know its wave speed is equal to its frequency multiplied by its new wavelength. Its frequency does not change, but its wavelength has changed. Uh, it's actually decreased. Uh, we also know the definition of uh, the um, refractive index N2 for medium 2 and refractive index uh, for medium 1, which is C over V1. But we said medium 1 was air, so V1 is actually just C, in which case N1 is just 1. Okay, remember the speed of light in air is, is around c anyway, so n1 is about 1. All right, so from this, we can work all this stuff out, which basically just says that the ratio of their speeds is equal to the ratio of their wavelengths, which is equal to uh, the ratio of their, well, well the inverse ratio of their um, refractive indices. So we get lambda 2 is equal to n1 lambda 1 over n2, we said that medium 1 is air, so n1 is just 1, and lambda 2 is equal to lambda 1 over n2. Now remember earlier when we assumed that the speed was the same, or rather we assumed that the wavelength of the, of the light ray remains the same in medium 2, which basically means we're assuming the speed of the light ray in medium 2 is the same, uh, we just got 2d is equal to m plus one half lambda. That's when we assumed that lambda was the same in medium two. But we know that lambda is not the same in medium two. We actually know that lambda is lambda two in medium two, which is lambda one. By the, I should actually say this is lambda one, which is lambda one divided by n two. So we have a new equation. We have two d equals m plus a half m plus a m plus a half m plus a half lambda one right but we but we know that that's not true we know the wavelength of medium two is lambda two which is lambda one divided by the refractive index of medium two so lambda one divided by m two and Doing just rearranging, uh, multiplying both sides by n2, the refractive index of medium 2, we get 2d n2. Uh, in, in textbooks, they'll just write n, they won't write n2. So 2d n is equal to m plus a half into lambda 1. Also, in textbooks, they won't write lambda 1, they'll just write lambda. So this is for constructive interference. Remember, this is for constructive interference in the case of thin films because the reflected ray, the reflected ray here, is any way, has any way undergone a phase change of 180 degrees. And so we need this to also undergo a phase change of 180 degrees, which is what it's doing. Now for destructive interference, you might have guessed, it's a very similar looking equation. For destructive interference, it's 2dn equals m lambda. Okay, so that's destructive. That's destructive. Right. Thank you for watching.